Hello, good afternoon, everyone. I wish to welcome you all to Japan House Los Angeles. My name is Yuko Kaifu. I'm the president of uh, Japan House Los Angeles. I really appreciate you having come here on a Friday afternoon. Of course, you could not have missed with those distinguished guest speakers today. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Japan House, we are the public diplomacy initiative launched by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan. We opened our doors about four years ago or so to showcase the best of Japan, various parts, uh, sides of Japan, aspects of Japan, ranging from art, culture, to uh, architecture, food films, entertainment, music, and you name it. We're currently exhibiting the Art of Ramen Bowl exhibition at the gallery downstairs on the second floor, right in front of Dolby Theater. And uh, we will be open till 8 p.m. today, so I hope that after the program is over, please uh, uh, take, make a, a point of uh, going there as well. Today's program is being presented in conjunction with the Bro's special exhibition, Takashi Murakami, Stepping on the Tail of a Rainbow, which will be open to public from May the 21st through September the 25th. It is a privilege and pleasure for Japan House LA to co-present this very special program. The program will be, um, is being actually live streamed on Japan House LA and the Broad website. So uh, if any of your friends or relatives or family has to miss it, um, it will be um, posted on the re recording will be available on our website as well. The program would not have happened without great support from Broad, particularly Ed Sachuto, Director of Audience Engagement, and Ed Sat, the Curator and Publication <laughs> Manager. Uh, thank you both and many more at the Broad, as well as the support, great support again from the Consulate General's Office um, of Japan in Los Angeles. I'd like to acknowledge Joanne Heiler, <laughs> who uh, founding director of The Broad, who is joining us today. Thank you, Joanne. I know how busy you are with the express, uh, um, impressive exhibitions that are being launched. Before we start the program, I'd like to remind everyone to please keep wearing masks throughout the program uh, for the safety of everyone in the room. Um, if you've got to bring your masks, we have them available, so please uh, contact our staff. Um, of course, the speakers uh, would be uh, taking off their um, masks. Um, we will have uh, one hour or so of chat uh, by um, Etsuko Price and uh, Takashi Murakami, which will be followed by Q&A, and then we'll be having a networking reception. Before we get down to business, the fireside chat, um, I'd like to ask Consul General Akira Muto of Japan to say a few words. Consul General? Uh, it's my uh, great pleasure to uh, join this special event featuring a conversation uh, between uh, Mr. Takashi Murakami and Mrs. Esko Price. I've been looking forward to uh, this event um, organized by the Broad and the uh, Japan House LA. Uh, and I'm sure that the uh, art lovers uh, in this uh, audience uh, share the same sentiment. How fitting that the event is being held in LA, a city that relishes and appreciates the pop art of Mr. Murakami. When I recently visited the broad, I heard how Mr. Murakami's works were hugely popular and a big draw among audiences. I was amazed to see the gift shop full of items related to Mr. Murakami, an indication of his art's popularity among Angelinos of course, Japanese pop art is heavily influenced by such American pop artists as Andy Warhol and Lo Lichtenstein. But Mr. Murakami's exhibition at the Broad is not only about Japanese pop. What it, it, what it makes it significant is its combination of Japanese elements from Japanese traditions and aesthetics that meld with Western pop art influences. The combination is what makes the exhibition is so special. I want to highlight Mr. Murakami's artwork and his connection to traditional Japanese art. Today's event 
will offer us an opportunity to learn more about the balance of elements. Through Mr. Etsko Price, she and her husband, Mr. Joe Price, have introduced Japanese Edo period painter Ito Jakchu to the world through the extensive collection of artworks. Mr. Murakami's art is influenced by the aesthetics of Ito Jakchu and others, and you will find many traces of Jakchu in his art. I would like to acknowledge the Broad's founding director, Joanne Hela, director of audience management, Ed Patuto, and the curator and publication manager, Ed Chad, uh, for showcasing Mr. Murakami's, Murakami's artworks to a broad audience. I hope all visitors to the Broad's enjoy and appreciate the contemporary Japanese pop art and traditional Japanese art elements in his work. Thank you, and please enjoy the uh, rest of today's event. Thank you, Council General. As a matter of fact, this program would not have happened without your great support and initiation, so thank you. Um, the fireside chat today may look like a most unusual um, combination of speakers on the surface. Um, Tadashi Muraka Takashi Murakami is the most sensational contemporary artist of the day, and Etsuko Price, who along with her husband Joe Price, has amassed an unparalleled collection of traditional Japanese art, primarily in the Edo period. Today's dialogue will explore how traditional Japanese painting has influenced and inspired Takashi Murakami's creative practice and how Etsuko and her husband have, have been attracted to Takashi's work and her, their passion about the Edo period artist. But before we invite the speakers to the chairs, I would like to ask Ed Chat, the curator and publications manager of the Broad, to speak about today's discussion in the context of Takashi's new exhibition at the Broad. Ed Chad has curated a number of major exhibitions at the Broad. He's also the editor-in-chief of the books featuring the Broad collection. Most recently, of course, he curated this special exhibition, Takashi Murakami, Stepping on the Tail, on the Tail of a Rainbow. So without further ado, Ed, can you come to the podium? Thank you, Yuko, and, and thank you, uh, Consul General, for the introduction and facil facilitating uh, this conversation uh, this evening. Um, this is a very important and, and meaningful event for the Broad Museum. Uh, as the uh, Consul General uh, generously described, we're a very popular museum uh, where uh, we have a diverse a uh, very young audience flowing into our galleries uh, all week. Uh, we generally are blessed with a very big line and a very enthusiastic audience for contemporary art. And bringing uh, Takashi Murakami's work uh, to the museum uh, is, a is a fulfillment uh, of a commitment that Eli and Edie Broad made uh, to Takashi Murakami's work uh, over the course of the last decade. Uh, we have 12 works in the collection to which uh, we have added uh, loans from generous lenders at the exhibition. Uh, and we have also uh, developed uh, in collaboration, uh, collaboration with Takashi Murakami uh, immersive wallpaper rooms, uh, and in collaboration uh, with Instagram, uh, Meta, and Buck Studios, even some augmented reality uh, presentations uh, on uh, our lawn in our, in our East West Bank Plaza at the Broad. Uh, underneath uh, the main feature of the museum, uh, which is our beautiful shell, our veil, uh, we have uh, raining uh, Murakami flowers descending on our visitors like a storm as they enter the building, uh, as well as many other augmented reality uh, uh, welcoming gestures uh, to our audience. 
Those, uh, that wonderful presentation, however, uh, uh, exists in dialogue uh, with traditional uh, Japanese art. Uh, Takashi Murakami uh, has a PhD in Nihonga painting uh, and references from uh, both Japanese uh, uh, classical painting uh, as well as Chinese painting flow through the works at the Broad. So this event tonight uh, brings it all together. Uh, through the generosity uh, of Mrs. Price uh, and uh, Takashi Murakami, uh, we'll be able uh, to get into some of the depth uh, behind some of the works that you will hopefully see uh, with us at the museum. Uh, I wanna say you are all welcome. Please say hello when you come. Uh, and um, thank you for coming. Thank you, Ed, so much. So now, now let's start the program. I'd like to invite Etsuko Price and Takashi Murakami up onto the stage. And I'm going to join, I'm going to join you there. And uh, Yuko-san is an interpreter. So please turn your microphone on. So um, again, thank you so much for making your time available, um, Takashi-san. Um, you must be very busy, um, and uh, it's an honor having you here, and Etsuko-san as well. Um, so uh, as I said earlier, it might um, look like um, very surprising combination, the, the matter of fact that you have known each other. Of course, you have known each other's work. Um, can you tell us a little bit of, about how you got to know each other and how you assess for um, Etsuko-san, I'd like to go to you first, how you and um, Joe-san, your husband, have um, been fascinated with um, Murakami-san's work. Uh, tonight, my husband is not so young, so he couldn't come, but say hello to everybody. Um, more than 35 years ago, our friend, Professor Tsuji from Tokyo University, Japanese Art History Department, told us, Jo-san, san I just got what I want to and they say, what is it? It's painting? And he said, no, a man. <laughs> it was Murakami Takashi-san. That was more than 35 years ago, but we didn't have any chance to see his painting till he brought his painting to Los Angeles in almost 30 years ago. Yes, yeah, 30 years ago, yeah, almost, yeah, okay. at the LAC, uh, no, right, no, right. MoMA, yes. Okay. And then I was quite surprised what Professor Tsuji told me and asked about Murakami-san. I was expecting absolutely Japanese painting, uh, Edo art. And then, but when my husband saw Takashi-san's painting in the MoMA, uh, Moka, he said, my gosh, this is Ito Chakuchi of today. And ever since then, we are very good friends to each other. Even if we don't see each other for a long, long time, we have a, such a good memory. And especially when he was invited to show his painting in Versailles in France, that was absolutely our highlight. And I, it was, I just cannot explain about his 
exhibition at Versailles in France, but he can maybe tell you tonight. But ever since then, we treat him as a Itoja Kuchu of today. You may not know who Itoja Kuchu is. He's um, one of the Japanese painter in Edo, 17th, 18th century artist. It's very one of a kind, uh, color and composition and a personality. It's only one of a kind in the Japanese art history. But we treat Mr. Murakami as a jakuchu. But you will see uh, his exhibition and he will explain to you about his art tonight. You will enjoy it. Thank you, Esko san. I'd like to ask you more, a bit more about why Jo san called him uh, Ito Jakuchu. But then um, before we get to that, um, Murakami san, can, can you tell us about how you got to meet the oh, prices okay. and how your relationship evolved? Oh, physically meet with uh, two people like uh, Jo and Esko Price, uh, I totally forget. So, but uh, I knew very much to the, these uh, guys' collection. This is a uh, very unique the standing position in uh, Japanese art movement. And then I remember in uh, maybe 80s, starting for the presentation in Japan, no? When is uh, starting for the, your collection in a very you know, big buzz making uh, 90s? We are getting old, so I cannot remember much. Okay, yeah, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, both. I getting old also, I got 60 years old, but uh, looks like I, because my, you know, I was started to the learn in university, like uh, like 21, 22, but the I mentioned for the Ito Jakuchu was 25, 26, almost starting, almost same time to starting for the contemporary art. That's why I can understand, I can thinking about the juxtaposition, the kind of the, you know, how can I say in a Kiso no Keifu in English, like, uh, you know, the Kiso no Keifu is what is uh, in English? Lineage of eccentrics. Okay. This is, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I don't know, okay. So, but uh, this, this was, uh, uh, the, the, this title, the book was published in Japan, uh, Nobuo Tsuji, who is a, a historian, uh, Japanese uh, art, and uh, he published this book was 1975 or 74 or something like that. So, but uh, until, uh, the 80s, in late 80s, that book is very quiet. But uh, one day, uh, came up to the Jakuchu revival. Maybe like uh, you brought to the, your collection or like a, uh, like a imperial collection to uh, making for the big show in the Jakuchu collection. So, and then that coming up to the uh, revival to the boom, plus uh, Nobuo Tsuji just criticized is a, uh, very fit with uh, postmodern culture because Ito Jakuchu, who found uh, uh, very much, is a subculture audience. So I really remember like a uh, save department. It's a uh, uh, this department store pushing for the you know art movement and uh, created for the art vibe, and uh, you know same position to talking about. Uh, for example, Anselm Kiefer stuff and uh, Ito Jakuchu stuff. It's really, you know, uh, uh, young people understanding for the, oh, this is a quite new, uh, like a movement, but this is a very old, you know, art. So, and then uh, maybe like I mentioned for the price name is exactly the collection from the, you know, title. Uh, under the name in the Jakuchu something. So, but the, I'm sorry about, the, I forgot the physically meeting when, <laughs> so. That doesn't really matter, does it? Um. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, until now is a, uh, you know, good friendship with them because, uh, you know, uh, art collection is very uh, uh, good, uh, how can I say, communication, uh, can understanding each other because uh, in, how can I say, go through the 
at peace is uh, how uh, cannot thinking about the generation gap. So any time to the collector or art lover can traveling in a time machine in uh, you know hundred years, two hundred years is can possible to easy to travel. That means like uh, you know we making a same travel. That's why you know uh, you know generation gap is not doesn't have, I think. So when you first came across uh, the paintings of um, Ito Jakchu, was it a surprise or shocking for you, or uh, you accepted as the um, as um, Professor Tsuji was talking about, like it's. Um, um, the lineage of eccentrics, but eccentrism, he, according to Tsuji Sensei, is not substream or sidestream; it's avant-garde of mainstream. So, in that regard, uh, it's the same thing. Um, the the same um, kind of um, categorization or the characterization of the paintings. Ito Jakcho, Jakcho's work has some common similarities with your your paintings. Uh, maybe uh, the, in the 80s, uh, I, I told you about, uh, about the revival movement in uh, Ito Jakchu revival stuff, that moment. Before, so Japanese audience, anytime to mention for the kind of the quiet, like uh, say wabi-sabi stuff, because too much influence from the Western culture, I think. So calling Ogata or some Limpa, say the Limpa school is uh, quite famous. Yes, now still very you know, strong movement this is because you know, this is uh, one of the very big movement, Limpa. It's uh, the came from the very stylish, uh, like a, a flower design stuff and the landscape design stuff. That is a mainstream and also the why this is uh, the limpa was pretty famous is maybe like uh, influence from the Western view. So, but the uh, jakuchu uh, or uh, like an uh, eccentric uh, group of type of artists, why is uh, hiding from in the history? Because uh, you know these guys, these artists was exactly. You know, Japanese view. One of the Japanese view is a very, how can I say, micro, or I don't know, like, a, uh, I don't know, not, uh, I don't know. <laughs> so precise, you know, watching. And uh, for example, uh, one of the, another artist, uh, Shohaku Soga, this is, uh, you know, uh, my you know favorite art, one of the my favorite artists, that guy is uh, you know uh, how can I say original painting came from China and Korea, so mostly China, and uh, Edo period artist uh, like a leading and watching from the original painting and then scanning in brain and plus something. Uh, new, uh, you know, uh, at the moment was cutting edgy, like uh, information. Uh, for example, Jack Chu can, make, can paint it in uh, precisely, precisely, like a chicken, like shape of stuff, or a dog or something. Uh, Etsuko san, you know, before this talk show, or explain me about the when Jakuchu uh, making a paint in the tiger. So he exactly you know, imitated for the Chinese painting, plus he watching to the kind of the uh, skin or something, like, right? So, and then he precisely imitated this one, plus he explained in uh, painting the, how can I say, uh, didactic uh, explain stuff in, in a painting. Is that okay in English? I don't know. So, yeah, it's a, I, uh, I don't know. So, 
something like that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you. Maybe missing a, a way. <laughs> According to Joe Price, a centric mean is very special. Um, Murakami Takashi, Ito Jakuchu in uh, Edo period, and Rosetsu and all other, which everybody call eccentric. According to Joe Price, they are special, not eccentric. And the audience is eccentric <laughs> because they don't understand about certain things. So to us, we treated like a Professor Tsuji and Ito Jakuchu and Takashi-san, they are very normal. It's a different way to look at. And then all the audience is eccentric to him. I think, right? <laughs> but anyway, I like his shoes. <laughs> you mentioned you know, many times. Did you design this? No, 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 it's Balenciaga. By the way, so big. expensive. Yes. So, <laughs> when I first came across the, the book, the lineage of uh, eccentrics, um, and we're going to talk about it, and I asked uh, my professional colleagues, is, is it okay to call Murakami-san and Ito Jakuchu eccentrics? Because eccentrics is not necessarily a positive word to describe anyone. But they, they said it's okay because uh, Tsuji Sensei, Professor Tsuji, uh, already established that concept. But I, I guess that uh, for uh, Joe San, Joe Price, uh, to come across the, the first um, grapevine, uh, the, the first painting by uh, Ito Jakchu uh, when he was very young um, in New York. He was so fascinated with uh, that particular piece. And I think that uh, we do have somewhere the, a painting of it. But uh, why do you think Etsuko San? that Joe-san got so attracted to his painting. Could you please push number 13? It's a great, yes. Um, when my husband graduated Oklahoma University, which he was 22 or 23, and he got the gift, I think it was cash, from his parents, so he went to New York to buy a sports car. He, I think he loved Chevrolet sports car or something or Benz, I don't know. But he was walking in the Madison Street, uh, Madison Avenue, and he saw this painting and he just did not know what it is. But he said, I like it, I buy it. Oh, but before that, he was walking with Frank Roy Wright on the Madison Avenue. He went to this antique store first, and he had to follow Mr. Wright. And after the one hour or so in the store, he had to take Mr. Wright to the, his hotel. And then after that, he ran into this store and said, I want to buy this. And I don't, he said, what is this? But that time, everybody thought this was a Chinese painting. But he said, I will buy it anyway. So that was almost uh, 75 or 70 years. He's in 93. So he saw this as a very special painting. And then when he saw Murakami Takashi's painting first, he said, oh, I remember 70 years ago how much I was exciting. And then when he saw Takai-san's painting, he said, I got the same feeling. So it's painting itself, it's different. Competition is different, it's color, it's different. But somehow, my husband thought this was Murakami Takashi. I don't know why he said that, but maybe he saw something that beyond something that we cannot see. This is Takashi-san's painting. It's color and then composition and all that. It's very much like, uh, he believed <laughs> very much like Ito Jakuchu, remind him of Ito Jakuchu. 
he did, I'm sure Takashi san is now painting this as I'm going to make a copy of Ito Jakuchu. But it just, they must have the same feeling toward to art. Very original and very brave, beautiful, fun, and the color is so beautiful. You well, can really see beyond something. Takashi san, how do you respond to that? I'm sorry about that, you know, in starting for the very difficult something. So I want to speak in Japanese and the translation for Yuko-san. <laughs> so start. Ito Jakuchu-san no sakuhin o ma sugoku boku fukaku likai dekita no ga yappari sono gamen o kousei suru hoho gaえ、で、その画面をこう構成する構造。え、本を一冊作ったんですけど、ま、そこからでも僕のキャリアがスタートしたりしたので、え、本当の意味において僕のま、あのキャリアのスタート地点に弱中がいたって言っても過言ではないんです。あ、それともう一つ。He's just gonna translate. Sorry, I have to translate. So, um, um, I really understood Jakchu's um work really deeply when I understood how the surface and the composition is structured. Um, Jakchu really takes the viewer's um, the, the, um, eyes t um, through the surface and um, you have to, your gaze moves uh, up and down and it's taken up, uh, up the surface again. So um, he's really thinking about how the viewer's eyes are moving through the surface of his painting. Um, and uh, there's the, the grammar of painting um, in that there's a square plane surface and then your eyes are going back and forth, back and forth. And uh, so it's, it requires like a high technique to, um, to show the painting in a certain way. And in the Western art, uh, um, they always think about the, the realistic context. So they need to um, create the painting in a realistic way. So 
they always try to structure it in a 3D, three-dimensional way. And this is really something that I understood when I saw um, CGI animation. The American CGI animation becomes more and more realistic and more 3D. But um, even though we're using CGI, the Japanese anime stays uh, two-dimensional and uh, flat. And um, so when I saw Jack Chu's painting, um, I came up with the name Super Flat because I um, thought of them both in terms uh, pictorially on the, on the surface uh, structure is uh, very flat and also um, it kind of mirrored the way the Japanese society is structured uh, rather than creating a hierarchy and uh, putting people above or below each other. Um, the Japanese society remains sort of flat and then without hier hierarchy and keeping the, the up and down really ambiguous and within that structure people have relationship and I felt that is also super flat. So um, I came up with the term to both talk about the pictorial um, structure and the social structure and the artist that symbolized uh, symbolized that concept the most was Jack Chu. So I talked about all this to um, uh, Mr. Tsuji, uh, Nobuo Tsuji, and I asked him to, oh, explain all these things. And then he said, well, that's how you um, view the, uh, the, uh, these artworks, so you should write a book. And that's how I came to write um, the book Super Flat. And that basically started my career. So I can say that Jack Chu was at the very beginning of my career. That's fantastic, thank you. Um, Esko-san, you were gonna say something. Oh, I, uh, I should uh, mention about uh, when my husband see Japanese painting, um, he always have to see from a distance, very far distance, and then s stay in the back for 30 minutes or so, and then walk slowly toward to the painting, I don't know why, but when he see Murakami-san's painting, he do same thing. He always have to look from a distance and then walk toward to painting. And I can see why, maybe it's reversing of your philosophy, he got Takashi-san has influence from Japanese classical painting, and the viewer like Joe Price, when he see Murakami-san's painting, he have to see from a distance. And then he say, I understand his painting. I, I remember that uh, your, your husband, Joe-san, would spend hours and hours in front of um, one piece of uh, painting, so. Um, Takai-san, were you going to say something? I mean, and I know that I noticed that you picked up the microphone. あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
そういう環境でないとあの本物の環境で見てることとは言えないんだっていうすごいその干渉者サイドのクリエイティビティを非常に強く押し出してたコレクター,コレクターなんですよね。なのでその意味で、えー、あのその15年前か20年前か忘れちゃったけどその国立美術館でやられた展覧会は非常に日本のオーディエンスにとっても大変ショックだったと思うしそこにその要するに暗いところで見ろっていうその展覧会の在り方っていうものが、えー、やっぱりこうすごくショッキングだったのは。今おっしゃってたみたいにプライスさんの頭の中では多分タイムトラベルしてるんですよねそタイムトラベルは2つの意味があって一つは弱中みたいな人においてはまあもちろんあの200年か300年ぐらい前にタイムトラベルしてるのとともにそのアーティストが書いてる時間例えば1ヶ月なのか2週間なのかわからないですけどその時間をタイムトラベルしてるんですよねきっと。であのブロードさんの僕鑑賞方法を見てても思ったんですけどやっぱりコレクターはそのアーティストの書いてる時間をタイムトラベルする時に一番こうなんかあのど,どうしてコレクションしちゃうかっていうとその瞬間に自分がそこにこうあのアーティストの頭の中に入り込んでトラベルできるんですね。それがあのジョーさんとかはやってらっしゃったと思うんですよ。で、多分僕の作品をそういうふうにやってくださったっていうのは、僕が書いてる時間を一緒に同期しようとしていろいろ探っていただいて、それで僕の絵をあここで引っかかってここからこう例えばスノーボードするみたいにライディングできるんだとかそういうのを探し当てたときに、あこうやって見るとなるほどなるほどっていうような感じで鑑賞が終わるっていうことだと思うんですけど。そういう形でその鑑賞方法においてものすごくクリエイティブな見方を提示されてきた方だと思うんですよねだからその本当にあのコレクターって中毒みたいにどんどんどんどん作品買っちゃうのはまあその一回その旅にはまっちゃうとやっぱりまあトラベラーいろんなところに行きたくなるのと同じようにあの作家の頭の中のトラベルにもどんどん入り込んじゃってる。入り込んでいくと思ってそれをまあやっておられたすごくユニークなコレクターだったんだろうなとだったんだろうって過去形しちゃってすみません<笑>思いましたすみませんそう、so、15 years ago at the、uh, National Museum in Japan there was a price collection exhibition And、um, in front of Rosetsu's painting, it was really, really dark, maybe two or three candles. And、um, that's how we were presenting the, the painting. And then at LACMA, too, there was a very special viewing environment was created. And、uh, for Mr. Price, I believe that、um, he had a really strong philosophy about how Japanese paintings should be viewed.、Um, so he was a very rare、uh, collector because.、Um, He really was deeply thinking about how American viewers should face the Japanese traditional art. And so he thought that the, when the paintings were created、um, uh, in Japanese architecture, it was really dark. And inside the house where those works were、um, hung, it would be really,、uh, there, there's not much light. So they would use、uh, gold leaves and silver leaves、um, to use the reflection of the natural light. So, and therefore, the, the paintings should be viewed in such an environment. And then also at LACMA,、um, I think because you know, LA is really dry, but in Japan it's so humid. So for the viewers to really feel like they're viewing the paintings in the original environment, they increase the humidity、um, to, to change the, the experience of the viewer. So he, he felt that, I believe that he felt that there are real, true w a y to, correct w a y to view these works. And、um, so in that way, he was always thinking about the viewer's experience and、uh, environment in which to view these works. So it's,、uh, he's a very rare collector in that sense.、Um, so at the museum,、um, I think the, the National Museum show 15 years ago, I think was a, a bit of a shock for the Japanese audience、um, to be told that these paintings were to be seen in such dark environment. And、um, I think Mr. Price, in his head,、um, he was time traveling、uh, in two different senses. One, of course, is time traveling back to 200, 300 years ago when Jack Chu was painting these. But also,、um, collectors often time travel to the period of time that any artists are creating the work that they're looking at. 
And um, I think it's something that um, the reason why collectors are sort of forced to collect something is because they time travel to the moment the artist is painting or creating their work and uh, really get into their heads and um, really understand how and why these artists are making these works. So for, for my work as well, probably uh, Mr. Price could really see time travel to the t moment that I'm making those works and thought, oh, he must have had a problem here, he stumbled here, he had to stop, and then he had a breakthrough here. So he kind of has the, the uh, experience of writing, the experience of my um, act of painting. So I think um, the way he was viewing artwork um, has been very creative. So it's a very unique collector. And we often talk about people um, you know, being addicted to collect collecting artworks, but it's almost like you know, same as people who are addicted to traveling, because if you're addicted, then you keep wanting to travel to new places. So I think that's so sort of the same experience, and I think he's a very unique co collector. Please. Uh, oil painting is very thick. The Japanese art is a watercolor, so it's very thin. And if you see painting, which painted by uh, watercolor on, on a very bright light, it's very, very hard to see. And if it is a Japanese painting, or Chinese or Korean painting, on a very th uh, paper and a very thin color, you have to see in a dark room so they can see more. And one time, my husband was um, taking one student into the museum and put her into the case, in a very bright case, for 30 minutes. It was very, very sad situation. But she was, uh, he was asking this uh, girl, how you felt in such a bright case, sitting for 30 minutes? And she said, I didn't like it. And he said, this is the same thing happened to the any painting. You don't show painting or um, any object which artist made should see in a darker room. It's more gentle for the art and good for your eye, and you see more in dark, because your brain want to see, and therefore I will see more. That was my philosophy. It was very kind to the art. Um, so as uh, Takasan was saying, that you um, introduced in the, the real way of observing and appreciating art when the price collection travel uh, to Japan. Um, I also remember that uh, usually when you go into the art gallery, art museum in Japan, you are supposed to line up and queue and okay, in front of this particular painting, you're supposed to appreciate it. I mean, you can see it just for five minutes and then move on to the next one. So it's very structured. But then you said that, no, you don't have to do that. Um, students can come and sit down or lie down and appreciate and take as long time as they want to. And that was really sensational. Was really the new way of really appreciating the art. So I remember that and that, that was what uh, you and Joe, Joe san came up with. Uh, basically, uh, art collector is not just on the art collector uh, because just they wanna buy what they wanna buy they have some kind of obligation to teach younger or anybody how to treat art. My husband was more respecting toward to artists, of course, uh, art itself too, but um, he always said human is a second and the art is a first. We should respect more the way show the art and we have to, he was always saying, we have to teach young people how to look at art. So I, I like his philosophy. Thank you. So um, my next question to both of you is that you seem to have some certain message through the art. For example, um, Etsuko-san, when um, you and Joe decided to send the press collection to 
um, the devastated area after the, uh, the great East Japan um, earthquake and tsunami, you uh, sent the press collection again um, uh, to cheer people up. And some of the people who never um, expressed emotion before they came to the, the, the uh, exhibition shed tears and they could really um, be like human. So I, I think that the, the, your effort to heal the pains of people in the devastated area was there and I was really touched. But um, Takai-san also has had a long-standing message or theme. Uh, your theme was like, please correct me if I'm wrong, but um, the, uh, after the World War II or the economic disaster, uh, the disasters in 9-11, 3-11, uh, currently, um, we are uh, still not out of the woods in terms of the pandemic, COVID, uh, Ukraine, war in Ukraine, all these kind of things. And it seemed to um, feature, for example, 100 our hats um, and uh, some of the, the things that ha are exhibited in the abroad depict uh, like Taoism or immortality or um, so can you uh, talk a little bit about your message or what you want to deliver to people? No, tabun sono a boku no ne, an bra an price san tachi honin ga so motta ka douka chotto oitoite ne. Boku ga uke totta message, ano yosu ni ano higashi kanto da shinsai no toki ni nande ano so yu collection o ツアーしたかっていうその場所に僕のイマジネーションね。あの僕もそのあの東関東大震災で一番あの つまり自然の脅威があまりにも巨大でその だが、それでも生きていかなきゃいけないっていうことで、その自然を恐れおののくだけではなくて、自然を敬うっていうことをその宗教的な文脈で解釈し直さなければいけなかった。だからそのま一瞬外国から見ると一つの神様を信じずに
ああいったすごく大きな作品ができて僕的には良かったと思ってるしかつプライスさんのコレクションのツアーもそういう日本のリアリティの中に自分のコレクションを置いた時に自分がどう見えるかプライスさん自身がどう見えるかっていうことを試してみたかったんじゃないかなっていうね、まあ、ほんあの表面面的にはなんかいろいろねチャリティーとかそういうことあるかもしれないけど実はそういうことよりもコレクターとしてもしくはその鑑賞者として抑えられない欲求があったんじゃないかなと僕は思ったんです。であの、まあ、ちょっと僕のね展覧会の宣伝になっちゃうんですけど今回のパンデミックにおいてはこれ日本だけじゃなくて世界中のこう人たちが受け取った自然災害大きな自然災害なんですけどあの展覧会の奥の方にピンク色のなんか可愛らしい、まあ、でも変なキャラクターが立ってる絵があるんですけどねそれはあの今回のパンデミックの時に受け取った僕の印象の作品なんですよ。なのでそういう,こう自然災害と共に生きる人間の姿っていうのを書き写すっていうのは僕あの結構芸術の一つの大きなテーマだと自分は感じたのでその東関東大震災の時に。なので今回もパンデミックを機にいろいろと新しいことをやってたりするんですけどちょっとあのまとまりがあれですけどあのプライスさんのコレクションが何であのそういうところで持ち出してやったのかっていうのを僕感想を述べてみましたそう、so um, This is my own interpretation and impression of why、um, the prize collection sent the、uh, collection up to Japan after、um, the earthquake in 2011. It's my just personal、um, impression, so it might not be the same as how you actually felt.、Um, but、uh, that earthquake and tsunami disaster for me was the moment when I suddenly understood. Um, why Japan、uh, is not monotheistic but always believed in myriad of gods.、Um, that sort of mystery was, I always had that mystery, but it was resolved because、um, Japan is always、um, upset, onset by natural disasters all the time, and th th you, you cannot be saved even if you're believing in one. God, and they just keep coming, the natural disaster, one after another. So, what you over time understand is that you're completely powerless against nature, but you still have to keep on living. So,、um, you know, from just fearing nature, you have to start revering nature. And I think that's why、um, we started believing in so many different gods everywhere.、Um, in, a, in a religious way, we had to reinterpret. What nature,、uh, our relationship to nature. And for, from the outside, with、um, solid monotheistic religion, it might look、uh, a little bit all over the place, the way we believe in so many different gods. But I believe that that was the only way we could、um, overcome these natural disasters and、um, survive. So the, the earthquake was the moment when I understood the, the necessity of these r e l i g i o n and how they emerged. And、um, so I think the natural disasters sort of are at the core of Japanese culture. And、um, in the same way,、um, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Price presented the, the real way of viewing the traditional Japanese painting that it should be viewed in a dark place. I think it was、um, one way that they wanted to say that after these natural、uh, huge disasters is the time to view art. And I kind of imagine that's part of the reason why they sent their collection to Japan at that moment. And、um, at the Broad,、um, currently on view, the, the paintings that are currently on view,、um, the Hundred Arhats and the,、um, In the Land of the Dead, Stepping on、uh, the Tail of the Rainbow,、um, which is a 25 meter long painting. And also, the, the, my 100 meter long painting,、uh, 500 Arhats, that, are,、uh, that is still in.、Um, Uh, Qatar.、Um, I'm, I'm, I shouldn't be saying these things because I, I don't think it's very、um, polite to、uh, other collectors, but I really think these were the, my best works that I created at the best timing because、um, I think I understood that what is, what is Japanese? That question, I thought that is a natural disaster. And that's the moment I was able to create these、um, works. So Um, I was fortunate to create these works after these disasters. And then、um, 
so in a, in a way, I, again, it's my interpretation, but I thought that the, uh, Mr. Price wanted to sort of beyond beyond the sense of charity and wanting to do something good, I, uh, um, I sort of suspect that he wanted to sort of place um, himself in the, the particular situation after the disaster and wanted to see how it looked as well. So he, he wasn't satisfied just as the viewer or audience or collector and wanted to um, do something active, I think. And this um, is a little bit of a PR from my own show at the Broad, but um, uh, so pandemic is now, you know, we're still not quite out of pandemic and that's a global level natural disaster and everyone's experiencing it. And sort of related to, the, to, to that, um, in the museum currently on view, there's a pink painting that is a new painting I made um, during the pandemic. It's uh, called Unfamiliar People. Um, but I, I painted that because after the earthquake disaster, I really felt that it is an artist's um, job to um, sort of interpret and trans transfer the natural disaster that I, we experience into our art uh, painting. Um, so that's uh, that painting is also my sort of interpretation of the pandemic. Um, and anyway, I kind of went all over the place and it might not be uh, responding to any question, but this is my sort of, uh, my own interpretation of why the Price collection um, was sent to Japan at that moment. Thank you, Eskosan. Uh, was he right in <laughs> interpreting your invention? Yeah, he's right too. Um, after earthquake, we saw tiny tree with a plum blossom. Just tiny, tiny trees was blossoming. And we cried because that was so beautiful. It was just a tiny, two or three blossom of a tiny trees. And I said, how beautiful color that is. So my husband said, they need to see color and the space and shapes because everything was dark color. It was really nothing after earthquake. It was nothing but just a dark color. And then after we saw that tiny blossom of plum trees, my husband said, please call Professor Tsuji. Tsuji sensei was teaching one time at Tohoku University has a lot, he's a student. So I called the Sendai Museum and then told them about our idea. And they cried, said, please come and then cheer us up because we don't see any colors. That's why we went to there. And then many, 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 many people came, which we, was not, we were not expecting even if they lost everything, they were buying catalogs, which was $20 or $30. And some people were buying two or three catalogs. And I was asking, why do you buy many catalogs? And they said, I want to buy this to my children and the grandchildren and the memory of this uh, Tohoku disaster. And then we were so, so happy. We ended up staying in Tohoku for six months. And I think uh, especially doctors seeing very colorful Edo painting, and they said, oh my God, we saw the blood. That's how they felt. Everything was dirt. It was no color. And that's the time we thought, how important for human to see colors, shape. It's just, uh, that's how I felt. It was so, life is not that important if we don't see color, shape. That's how we felt when I saw all the dust of uh, earthquake that big. And we were very happy we were there. Thank you, Etsuko-san, for sharing the beautiful, touching stories, really. Um, so I know that we are pressed for time, uh, but one, one last question to Takashi-san. 
Um, because we're, um, the, the Broad is uh, just about to start your exhibition tomorrow, is there any message? Is there any, anything that you might want to convey to people who are planning to come to your exhibition? あの、さっきあのエドさんが言ってくださったみたいにあの結構AR オーギュメントリアリティの歌手が結構あるんですよね。で、それで展示してる作品とめちゃめちゃ遠いんですよね。なんかムードが。あの、作品は今言ったみた
and you know, how are they going to be different or similar in the near future for aspiring artists? Is a question for Takashi? A any, any of you. OK. Uh, I don't know much about uh, uh, young artists growing, but uh, when we, every year, we invite Japanese art history student or art student from Japan, and especially um, from art college student, well, looking at my husband, the way he treat painting, he said, oh, I wish my painting would be hand by Mr. Price, like Mr. Price, how they will take care of art. So therefore, we have to be serious to create good art. That's what I've heard from young artists. So they are looking for good handra in the future and they want to create good art so they can impress many, many people. That's, well, I don't know if I can answer to your question, but that's many young artists want to know what kind of people will collect their art in the future and how people will care. They worry very much about that. Thank you. Um, Takashi-san? あの、根源あの、芸術を根源本当にSo since you're, um, since one is really young, it's what is really important is not just to sort of take care of all the daily um, issues in the, on the surface or um, the, the, the problems that are existing just around uh, yourselves day to day, 
Um, that's also important, of course, but it's important to really have the question, uh, keep questioning what it is what it is that I am doing as a creator, and um, that that should be at the root of what you do, and you have to keep solving that question. Um, unless you keep doing that, I don't think you can um, overcome something uh, new and to express what you want to express. For example, um, and there's a Netflix si a series about Bob Ross, and uh, that documentary was sort of talking about how he was maybe used by uh, his business partner, but he, um, I believe that by painting, by keep painting, Bob Ross knew that he wasn't a huge major artist, but by keep painting um, together with people, there are landscapes, not the physical or painting landscapes, but the, the new vision that he could share with the audience. And I think, um, of course, he became super popular because he was doing this on TV, but it's not just that. I think he became explosively popular for a long time because he had this basic question. He kept questioning this. Uh, about himself. So I don't think there's any shortcut. And of course, when you're young, it's really important to to um, grab attention and to feel successful. But uh, to keep going and to have the longevity, I think um, it's really important to keep asking, keep having that question of what is art and what it is that I'm doing. Um, and you have to keep asking that in earnest. And no one really told me, taught me that, but that, that's what I believe. Thank you. Um, I really need to wrap up, but one last question, a simple one. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, can, can you do junk and pawn between you two? <laughs> um, so the oh, please use the microphone. Um, as one as a curator, do you feel that it's 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 very important to share? the works of art that you particularly feel, um, you know, that you collect. And as an artist, do you feel that you could create that piece, but is it just as important to share it with others? Or is it just for self? So I, I'm kind of just curious about the, the two things. Is it a self um, is, is, is just as important, and if no one else sees it, it's not in, in that, it doesn't matter to you? as an artist and as a collector? Um, as a collector, of course, we like to share with everybody. And when we were in Oklahoma, I lived in Oklahoma for 18 years. Since I moved to Oklahoma with my husband, he was uh, designing art at the museum. Someday he said, at the right place, at the right time, he would like to build a museum to share the collection. Because he always thought when people see the art, it will person itself become a better person. Um, but when you go to many different museums, Politics comes with it sometimes, and then as a collector, we don't like that. <laughs> it really, we are really scrambled by uh, museum politics. That's the only things we really hesitate come to the museum. I hope every museum without ego or politics, they will show art correct way. It's not the curator's way or the director's way. It just show to the people. And then so human can become a better person. And we, as a collector, we really hope that way. Thank you. Takashi-san. I know, a wonderful art is, の
彼はまあ死,ぬ死,ぬ死ぬまで作品を発表することもなく大家さんが見つけてそれでそこから有名になったんですけれどもいろいろとまあ障害があって男女の区別もなかったりとか区別ができなかったりとかいろいろあったんですけれどもその彼の持っているイマジネーションっていうのは彼が死んだ後に本当に誰ともなくその大家さんが発見して発表した直後からもうどんどんみんなを引きつけていくいってると。だからその意味でアーティストは何も考えなくていいと思ってるんですねただ作ればいいというかあのただ作ればいいんですけどもあのさっきまあ悦子さんが言ったみたいにまあまあいろいろ雑音僕も一番僕なんかねあのこんな変な靴履いてるぐらいですから一番雑音が気になる作家ですけどあの雑音とか関係なくとにかくこう。自分がやるべきその仕事、まあ、絵を描くなったら絵を描くとかそういうことに集中し続けることによって、えーまあ、その存命中に、えー、それが発見されなくても全然それでいいと思ってます死んだ後から芸術っていうのはそのアーティストの生きた歴史そのものをもう一回リマインドしてそれ本当にそのアーティストは真摯に芸術に向き合ったかどうかをもう一回世間が、えーなんていうんですかね、読み解き直した時に誠実であったアーティストしか残ってないんですねなのでそういう意味では本当に何にも考えない方が何にも考えなくていいと思ってます。Thank you so much.、Um, ah, sorry. <laughs> Towards the end I forgot. <laughs> All right, so、um, uh, wonderful, amazing art. It、uh, eventually will be discovered by great collectors like Mr. and Mrs. Price. So I don't think artists need to think about anything、uh, when we are creating. For example, the great example is Henry Darger.、Um, he, he created all these works, but、um, he, he didn't present any work、uh, while he was alive.、Um, he was a sanitation worker, and he, after he's, he died, his landlord found out all these work that he had created and then、uh, presented them. And he has certain disability, mental disabilities, and he wasn't able to disting- distinguish、um, sex, you know, boys and girls, in, their, in his、uh, work. And、uh, he was just、uh, creating. But, Um, after the landlord found his work and started showing the work, it, it, his work immediately became popular and it's been seen、um, widely. So I really don't think、um, artists need to think, they just need to create the work.、Um, Of course, there are a lot of noises around, and you, know, you are distracted by a lot. If you, if you look at me, I'm wearing this kind of shoes. It's all about, I'm really about noise all over the place. But,、um, but I think, really, if you're painting, you should paint. If you really need to focus on the work that you need to do, and、um, if you, if you ke-、uh, continue doing while you're alive, it's not necessary to be discovered or valued while you're alive. And once you're dead, then、uh, there people will look back and really th- see if you were earnestly asking q u e s t i o n if you were earnestly working on you know, what you were supposed to do. And only the, the artists who were earnest about these questions and their work、uh, are surviving. Thank you so very much. You're so inspirational. Yes, please give another round of big applause. Thank you. I, I don't want to stop. I want to, I, we could、uh, hear their talk for another hour or so, but、uh, we have to stop here.、Um, they would exit. Uh, please uh, stay seated、um, while they're getting out, and we're going to have a networking reception afterwards. So、um, I、uh, turn the mic over to my colleague, Mayor MacArthur. So、um, we're going to have a little、uh, photo shoot here with the, the guests. So we'd like to ask you、uh, to remain seated during the photo shoot. And then after the guests have、uh, passed outside, we're going to invite you all、um, to get drinks and、uh, have a look at our library while we rearrange the chairs in here and turn this magically into a reception room for you to enjoy drinks and appetizers. Thank you.